Legend of the game Tom Juan or Durr is in the spotlight once again, but not because of an incredible hand he played, but rather the many people he apparently owes money to. It was also just announced that he is now an ACR sponsored pro. No, seriously, I'm not joking. No confirmation yet if he will be participating in whatever this is from the CEO and owner Phil Nagy. Recently, Doug Polk tweeted he was, quote, going to cover the latest Tom Drawn debt situation as there has been some developments there tagging at Peter Jetton, at Jungle Man, and at Haralabob. Who am I missing? Feel free to come forward if you'd like to be included in the piece and Tom owes you money. Dan Cates or Jungle Man replied with, quote, you are missing many, many more. I don't know if it does much good to actually go after him though. To start, Jungle Man and Tom Juan's money disagreements go very far back. Jungle seems to be the biggest public victim, so to speak, as it has been over a decade at this point 14 years, I think, that Juan has owed money to Jungle. Without getting too far into the details, there was a heads up challenge that Juan issued to the poker community, claiming to be the best heads up player at the time. Tom Juan issued the Dur challenge in early 2009, where he said he would play anyone in the world not named Phil Galfond at Heads Up Pot Limit Oma or Heads Up No Limit. He first proved himself by actually beating Patrick Antonius for over a million who ended up buying out. But Juan inevitably ended up getting destroyed versus Jungle, who among other things like Black Friday, led to the challenge taking far longer than predicted until coming to a standstill. Juan did end up paying Jungle the majority of what he owed him. 1.3 million of the 1.5. Besides the 200k left, there were tons of side agreements and debts owed as late fees, of which Juan, to his credit, did end up paying nearly seven figures for. Actually, he's like given me essentially like 700 to 800k US, basically in penalties, since uh, 2010, which is like you know it's a pretty large sum. Um, and like if he doesn't play, he's like sort of going. He may owe more. Fast forward to today, the late fees still have not been completely paid, of which could be in the several hundreds of thousands of dollars or more. Is it something you're hoping to get resolved, you know, sooner than later? What do you mean by resolved? What do you mean by that? Horalibus and Peter both. I think that, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect in spots, right? I'm not even saying I dealt with either of those perfect, but both of them, there's been times in the past we talked and I said, I didn't think they were being fair. And then they try to push things publicly. So, yeah, it is to me, I don't really respect that. If you follow poker closely, you might notice this is a topic that repeatedly gets mentioned by Jungle on Twitter and on live streams every now and then when the chance comes up. What pisses me off is I don't, I'm not so sure he's really actively taking care of it. That's what pisses me off. And that he should have done it like ages ago. But he definitely tried. He definitely wants to. I'm waiting for him to make a sincere effort. I don't think that his effort's that sincere. If I'm really honest, it's like, especially lately, I don't know what's going on with him. I mean, I think he's really trying to get on his feet. I just, I, I don't really know if I'm, it's hard to know 100%. But this has, of course, not resulted in any big changes. Actually, there's a good chance that something might happen in the near future, which maybe I've said a few times. You've said that so many times. I've heard so, you say that about the challenge in 2015. 2015. I mean, Two thousand years later. When you when you talk to Tom, he's so convincing. Actually, it just feels like he's really going to do it this time. But uh, what year did it start? What year did the challenge begin? I think it started two thousand ten. Okay, so it's been seven years. Yeah. Um. And yeah, well, you know. Taking second place in the public victim arc of Juan's unpaid debts comes from the highly successful sports better. Carol Lapa Lalilas, who the whoever the Bye. fuck that is. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is such an NBA sharp or skilled better that he started consulting Mark Cuban in the Dallas Mavericks in 2016, where he was eventually hired as a full-time exec and director of quote quantitative research and development, aka a guy that does really well with data and using it to severely improve the odds of success. As it appears, Bob and Juan have also long worked together in the sports betting space. Due to Bob being such a winning sports better, he was banned from placing bets himself in what is likely every casino that exists. So for this reason, he would have other high roller DJs like Tom Juan make the bets on his behalf. This is called bearding in the betting world. Here, Bob recently calls out Juan in a long tweet Twitter thread starting out by tagging him and saying, 
quote, okay, my turn at Tom Juan. Can we finally get the last 350k that you owed me since 2010? Pretty please. For those that don't know the whole story, it's a wild story. Happy to share all of the details of this thrilling tale of Tom betting hoops, parentheses, bearding for me with one of the largest bookmakers in the world and nearly bankrupting him. Yes, that does sound like quite the story. To be clear, we won high seven figures. Tom was on a free roll and earned 25% without any risk. Unfortunately, Tom lost money betting on sports, bearding for another group with the same bookmaker and didn't have the cash to pay me my winnings. Through various annoying methods, I was able to collect most of it. I'm still owed 350K, however. Tom does not dispute the debt. He knows he's responsible for it. Our last conversation after the HCL million dollar match was me requesting him to pay a small monthly amount, at which point he ghosted me. Rolla Bob does go into farther detail of these two quotes, but I mean, the rest of it is basically the same and gets kind of too far into the sports betting and gambling terms. But if you want to read it, here it is. Finishing with another fun detail was Tom very rarely offered up any of the money owed. Luckily for me, I had a good relationship with another former Beard who was also working with me that year. This person owed Tom some seven figures through some poker thing and agreed to pay me instead of Tom. So that's pretty interesting. He is basically paying off his debt, not to the person directly, but to a person that Tom owed money. Without his help, I'd likely still be owed mid seven figures from Tom. I talked about it in 2015-ish here, which he links an interview he did at the time with Joey Ingram. In this, Bob cryptically references who is assumed to be Juan as being a quote, NVG superhero. It involves a poke, like a former NVG superhero, I'll say that. I won't mention his name, but this is like the closest to me getting rolled by someone conned. Which, after much research, stands for news, views, and gossip section of the poker form 2 plus 2 and refers to a famous poker player, which, as we just learned, was in fact Tom Dwan. Uh, it's, Tom, Tom, it's, it's Tom Dwan, maybe, in the, in the realm of, of possibility for this one. I mean, I'm not going to say who it is, but I will say that this person is basically one giant excuse after another as to why he can't pay me the money that he owes me. Like, what are you going to do? Threaten to out the guy on Chicago Joey's chat? That's probably about it. Good. Make a blog post. It's pretty interesting just how careful Haralabob was to publicly speaking out about Juan versus then and now. It seems like a lot has changed since then. I don't know. You can't really... You just got to hope that at the end of the day, someone is honorable. And the other thing is this person shouldn't not have he sh you know he should be able to pay you like he should it doesn't appear to me that his lifestyle has changed in any way in fact you could argue it's gone the opposite way he's still on action he's still doing things why is he not paying you do you have a lot of these people that owe you this this six seven figures no he's the only one that's still around how around is he I got to give a shout out to Joey here for really fishing for some information. How, how around is he? How around is he? No, he's the only one that I still, that I'm actually owed, uh, owed, owed money from. And even as recent as less than a year ago when the million dollar game was happening at Hustler Casino Live, Bob touches on his debts that are still outstanding with Dwan and tells a very funny story on how he once cunningly got some of his money back. This is how I collected money from Tom Duan. I'll tell you this, okay? It's like 3 a.m. at the Aria Casino. I'm wandering around. Floor person's like, does anyone know where Tom is? I have Tom's number. We're about to pick up his chips, and he's got cash, and this is a pain in the ass, and I don't want to. Can someone call oh, Tom? Oh, this is a true story. Can someone yes. call Tom to come pick up his money? <laughs> so I'm like, fuck this. There's like 300 grand there. Guy owes me like, I don't know, 2 million or something like that. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I was like, let me, I'll take, I'll handle this. Give me a, give me a second. So I, I pick up the phone. I call Tom. Tom's not answering. Oh yeah. What? Oh, hey. That's not Give true. it to me. Did no, you answer that's it? that's not true. You called me. I answered. Oh yeah. And I was like, you I'm said, taking your money. You said, can I have this? I was like, I have a small piece of it. One second. Let me add up. And I was like, he's Call good. up like slightly more than this. <laughs> I was piece. like, I was like, he's good. He's good. Yeah, I'll take it. No, they made <laughs> No, no. They handed the phone to the floor. No, they didn't. They did for they sure. Did not. They the did floor not. said, can I give it to him? They did not. They did not. I hung up. Sure. Of course I took it all, bro. What was I gonna do? I was I was rooting for them to ban me from that fucking casino. They did for sure. <laughs> to ban me from that fucking casino. <laughs> 100%. That's like way different. How That's exactly. I mean, now let's hear your story, Tom. Tom's like, I talked to him and Tom, like, me and him had no, a conversation. No, he called me. He's like, can I have this? And I'm like, I have a piece in one second. And he's like, come on, come on. And then I was able, I was like, up oh, just more than that. Okay. 
four ways. And then he, and then I had to talk to the floor and be like, yes. And then I get needled for it ten years no, later. Nobody talks to the floor. Nobody talks to the floor. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because Come the, on, next the casino day, wouldn't let you take three. Okay. I, of course, I got like me. I'm like further than that casino. <laughs> of course, I can just imagine just walk Bob walking around Aria, chips. just picking a random chip, being like, "Yeah, I'm taking this." <laughs> And finally, more recently, this man named Peter Jetton has come forward, taking to Twitter with, quote, would caution against doing business with Tom Juan. He's owed me 226k for four years and continues to use delay tactics to avoid payment. He says he'll pay next week, next Triton poker stop, etc., but never does. Going on with more tweets saying, I decided to tweet about Tom Juan because I think there is zero chance of him actually paying me if I don't. My view is that he's got such a massive ego that even even if he makes 20 million tomorrow, he'll punt it off gambling before he pays. When I get a minute, I'll share texts that show how awful it's been dealing with him. And continuing, quote, after I tweeted about Tom, he sent me 30k. Things aren't looking good though. One of our recent convos went something like this. He says he'll pay remaining balance in Jeju. I say no, I don't believe you. He says no, if he doesn't, he'll add 25k on top. I say no. He then switches gears and says he doesn't owe the full amount and that I'm a liar slash scum, etc. This is after four years of saying he'd pay full amount soon. He was always civil when I was giving him more time, but when I put my foot down, he changed tactics completely. I've never dealt with someone this unethical. So yeah, very interesting. Peter just randomly is blowing up my phone a bunch. It's, I don't even want to get into that one that much. That one. We were close for a long time, so that one, that's yeah, weird. Peter, Peter, like, pissed me off enough, and I was like, there there were two times I was like, listen, like, I didn't mind taking the worst of it or whatever. He pissed me off enough. All right, we can arbitrate. And then he was like, no, we're going to arbitrate in the court of public opinion or some shit. And when he knew I didn't have my Twitter, too. And I'm like, okay. And then he's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> there because there's like old texts and stuff that he's saying are a certain way. I'm like, okay, then send them to me. It's not credible to say you think someone owes you money and... You're not going to help any. You're not going to sit. You know, that's just not yeah. real. Like, and and it just like out of, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a spot I'm very grumpy about. But. At this point in time, it seems more clear on the surface that Tom Juan is a scammer in terms of borrowing money and not paying it back. I specify on the surface as we likely don't have all the details and things are often not always as they may seem. I mean, for example, how can a guy like Jungle go so long without getting paid and be decently fine with it over so many years. It just doesn't feel like everything adds up. Maybe Juan just doesn't really get ousted or put on full blast and disowned because he is such a legend of the game at this point and maybe is overall known to repay his debts despite it being such a slow and unacceptable pace. With potential bad habits and not actually having the money as mentioned from Jungle, Juan's legendary reputation could be slowly dwindling. He should have paid the money when he had it. That's where he was really a piece of shit. Now he doesn't have it. If we're really honest, he doesn't respond to my texts. He, he can't respond. I mean, he, I think he wants to pay. He knows that he's ridiculous. It's not like a fucking secret. He doesn't, he, he wants to, uh, he would pay if he could pay. Now he just can't. And I think if I'm really honest, I think that he, that Tom uh, probably spends too much on dumb shit instead of paying people that he should. I think that's a really high likelihood, and I'll absolutely call him out for that because that is not nice. It's, it's just, I'm not the only one he owes. I know for that for a million percent fact. He was like his best friends. To many fans, it would be a total surprise what some of the greatest names of the game like Tom Juan have done or are being accused of. Without guys like Doug Polk and Joey Ingram reporting on cases like this for years on end, the bad actions in poker might go totally unnoticed and there would be no public pressure for change, so hats off to them. And lastly, in just released news, Tom Juan has joined ACR as a sponsored pro. At the end of the day, I, I believe in ACR. I believe in Phil, especially. The heart's in the right place. This is significant because ACR hasn't had a good reputation, especially lately. They've been criticized for not doing enough to stop cheating in games and for not taking good care of players. Notably of which they recently invited players to attempt to have a successful bot running on their site 
and offered a $100,000 reward, but then canceled when someone seemingly succeeded and ACR realized they made a terrible mistake. Only time will tell if this partnership with Tom Juan is a massive win for players or just a massive cash grab by Juan who might just really need it if he really does owe everyone money. Now there's like so many uh, issues and vulnerabilities around poker, especially for online like RTA stuff. Um, so it's something I'm trying to uh, do my part in. I would hope they're not going to mess up or have mistakes, but I'm way more confident that if they do, they'll face it than other groups. And I think as someone that's played all over the world, had a lot of shenanigans go on, you know, that that is a really important uh, thing, in my opinion. Peter with the final word, quote, I wonder if he'll use this sponsorship money to pay back any of the people he owes or if he'll just gamble it away and spew it on Insta girls slash private planes. Let me know what you guys think about this entire story in the comment section. Is Tom Juan a bad guy? Is he scamming people, not paying them money back? Is there more to the story? He's still a legend. You gotta love the guy, but what's going on? Why is he getting sponsored by ACR? This is all just kind of weird, right?